Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Today I'm going to share with you some of the new November numbers that came in regarding new construction. And I saw an interesting article about water once again. So we're going to touch on that too. Welcome and thanks for watching. Do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. There are some numbers that come out looking at resales and new construction. Now most of the new construction is up in the city of Buckeye, Queen Creek area, and Maricopa. Overall, those are the three big players. And what we're seeing, and it's kind of a little bit of a mixed message here. I'm going to try and dissect it a little bit for you. But there were 1,364 new homes closed with a median sales price of 529995 The unit count is down just 2% from November 21. Now, before I go any further, let me tell you what I think about that. Because November 21, um, the homes weren't being delivered. So they just weren't done. So there weren't as many closings. So we're down 2%. Uh, but we're down 2% versus a time when... The homes weren't really closing it. Does that make sense? So now builders have a lot more spec homes. They have a lot more incentives. And they're selling more homes. Or almost as many homes as they did last year. And it said. And it says the median sales price is up 18%. However, I suspect there were more concessions hidden in that sales price than there were 12 months ago. And concessions are not recorded by the counties. So while the sales price is up 18%, they're giving you like forty, fifty thousand dollars to spend in the design center. They're throwing thousands of dollars towards closing costs for you. They're helping buy down your rate. So that's that's kind of baked into that 529 number. Now the resale people, you and I that own homes, we don't get to play in that sandbox. So there were 3,969 resale homes closed with a medium sales price of 429.9. The unit count is down a massive 55% from last year, while the median sales price is up less than 1%. The comment about concessions applies here too, but not to the degree it does with new construction. So in reality, resale prices net of concessions are probably lower than they were 12 months ago. And now it goes on to say that the contrast between the new resale markets is greater than I've ever seen. This is a Cranford report. New home closings and recorded prices remain quite strong, but the resale market has collapsed since March. Sales is at its lowest for November since 2007. You see that on the seven-day moving average that I show you too. And the median sales price has dropped almost 4% in a single month. So what's that roll out to? Well, right now, sales are down almost 12% since its peak in May. So those of you hoping for a 20% drop in prices, you're halfway there. A little more than halfway there. When we get to 20%, are you going to pull the trigger? I kind of doubt it. Because when things start going down, people get a little edgy and they wait. So it's, it's a very rate-driven market. And that's one thing I wanted to talk about a little bit here, too. Because... You're looking at new construction and it's doing well. And why is it doing well? Because they are able to buy down the rate. So when the rates get to a level where it helps with affordability, the buyers are back out there in force. But in the resale market, you're not getting as many incentives to buy that home. So that has dropped by 53%. But it's not dropping in new construction. If rates go down in the next year or two, that wall of people that I said that are sitting back waiting are going to start showing up. And 5.5% seems to be that number where they come out of the woodwork. We still have an affordability problem. I'm not, I'm not cheering from the sidelines hoping that rates get really attractive in the first quarter. And I'll tell you why. I, I think that would be a sucker's rally. Um, now, the Fed's really between a rock and a hard place. Because if they're squeezing too tight and it's going to really hurt the economy... They're going to have to do quantitative easing all over again, and that's just going to be kicking the can down the road. Wouldn't it be nice to see this just kind of level out slowly and reach some level of affordability rather than things happening quickly? And why do I never turn my phone off when I'm recording a video? Anyway, um, that's where we're at with new construction. The other thing that we're seeing here is 
builders, this is out of the Wall Street Journal, in Arizona, home builders fight to show there's enough water for new residents. Regulators scrutinize projects to ensure they won't cause taps in the surrounding cities to run dry. And they're talking about Buckeye, which has the weirdest city boundaries I've ever seen in my life in any area. I mean, look at this. Jig, jag, jig, jag down here, little spots. Um, so they've got these big developments going on out here. And uh, one of them owned by Howard Hughes out of Texas, Howard Hughes Corporation. They spent $600 million to buy 37,000 acres in the valley flanked by two mountain ranges. Plans to build 100,000 homes over the next 50 years. So I won't be here. Along with 55 million square feet of offices and other commercial real estate, the largest such project in state history. But whether it's completed will depend on whether or not there's enough water for people to live, work, and shop there. The AW, ADWR, Arizona Department of Resources, is currently conducting a study of the underground basin to determine the groundwater supply is adequate to support the planned population for 100 years. Now, 100 years seems to be the magic number. You have to have enough water for 100 years. Now, what happens after 100 years? Do we just teleport to another part of the country? So 100 years is the, num is the supply that you have to have. If you're going to build homes there, you better show the state that you've got 100 years worth of water. Now, that's not everywhere because this is just in the areas surrounding the city. So if you're going out, way out west, like out by the Colorado River, which is drying up, um, you don't have to go through this. So developers could build like crazy out there. And that's where a lot of the farming is going on. And that's where the water is really being sucked out of the aquifers uh, by the farms out there. And uh, the state is going to have to address how they're going to manage that because wells are going dry out there. And they're saying here that they're just isn't water to sustain millions and millions of new houses. Well, I don't see where they're building millions and millions of new houses, uh, but they are building building more. And uh, the chief executive of the Howard Hughes said the company will apply conservation techniques at this new development called Terra Valles. It's already using successfully in Nevada. Those include water recycling and drought tolerant landscaping. Now, one thing about Nevada, especially Las Vegas, they, uh, they are very good about recycling their water. But so the state feels pretty confident there's a roadmap that they can find a solution. And uh, uh, the Howard Hughes says they think that the state, in their estimates, is probably being too conservative about the supply of water. It's probably a good time to be a little too conservative about passing out uh, developments in the hope that the water's going to last. Uh, they're, they're saying that they easily have a 50-year supply out there right now. But what they don't want are these developments coming up and it starts sucking up all the groundwater and it hurts other people that already have wells in their supply. It also says down here, Arizona's working up to open up more supplies. The legislature this year authorized $1 billion in investments for everything from desalinization plants to more recycling. Eventually, he said, these projects will help support more development. But the way we work right now, we can't improve until the water's there. He says there's not going to be a home built without water. So they're drawing a line in the sand. Good luck hoping for that desalinization plant. That's going to take a long time. And that water's going to be incredibly expensive. So we'll see what happens there. When you talk about water in Arizona, there's really two camps. People that say that, um, oh, there's plenty of water out there. And then people on the other end that say we're doomed. Not a whole lot going on in the middle. And so it causes a lot of... Uh, um, arguments and now you've got developers uh, pitting themselves up against uh, state officials and uh, we wait and see who wins probably not going to be the developers it's a good time to be conservative and take a serious look at this and there's it's also a good time to start to look at farming and figure out how we can start saving water in the archaic method of which we irrigate our farms that will go a great deal in hanging on to a lot of the water because our water is down by about 25 percent that we get allocated right now out of the colorado river so times are tough um, we're not building millions and millions of homes like that one uh, government official said uh, but we will be adding quite a few people to the desert and we need to be very conservative about how we dish out these permits now going back to permits again talking about new housing here's what's interesting while I shared with you numbers that new housing sales are up and that their sales prices are up, 
I also find it interesting that in October, we have the lowest number of new building permits for single-family homes since 2015. So if sales are up and prices are up, why aren't there any new permits coming out? Why is that now at a record low since 2015? So there's a lot of devil in the details that we'll have to continue to watch as we get into 2023. I sense that they just have a lot of inventory left out there now that they want to see soaked up before they start putting more hammers out there. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.